Brian Wilson, alongside Larry O'Connor. You know, I uh, have been in Washington for a year now, and one of the things that I love about this city is the, the first-class restaurants. I mean, some of the finest places to eat, and uh, and one of the people responsible for some of the great restaurants here is our next guest. Uh, he's Chef Brian Voltaggio. Of course, you know him from Top Chef a few years ago, and then just this last uh, summer at Top Chef Masters, a finalist in both of those episodes, uh, both of those shows. Uh, unfortunately, not the victor, Brian Voltaggio, but we were all pulling for you. Uh, thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you. Good morning, guys. You have the distinction of being on both shows and making it to the finals. Uh, the first time you lost to your brother, who, by the way, went Hollywood on us and is not even uh, here in the area anymore. <laughs> yes, he did. Uh, is it? I mean, you must be proud of yourself, but at the same time, are you ready to go back and, and go through it again <laughs> to try to get the crown? No, no, I'm done. I, um, that was that was enough. I mean, it, you know, for me, it was great to to go and be the first to to go from regular chef to to masters. I mean. So to go as far as I did and to raise as, as much money as I did for Share Strength, it was it was a great run. It was fun. I met a lot of new people, but I'm done competing. Well, well what, what is it like to be in that crucible where you're competing at such a high level yeah, with so many like cameras torture. watching everything? Um, you know, I, I'll I'll be honest with you. It's actually it's it's so for me it's a lot of fun personally um, because you know having you know multiple restaurants now you know there's obviously a huge amount of responsibilities you know daily and you know, tons of people pulling at you. But the cool thing is, is that when you're doing these competitions, you're only cooking. There's nothing else going on. Mm. You know, for that 30 minutes that you have to do a quick fire, that two hours you have to cook for, for an elimination challenge, that, that's it. You know, there's no interruptions. And um, so you kind of just get to do your thing. Well, Brian, so, Brian, your hometown is Frederick, and that's where you opened your first restaurant, uh, Volt, which is still there, obviously, and doing great. Uh, but then you opened uh, Range here in Friendship Heights here in Washington, D.C., uh, you, you, because of your time at Charlie Palmer, you kind of know what it's like to cater to the government crowd here. So you had an right. interesting response to the government shutdown. You took to Twitter and you offered free pizza to government employees who were furloughed. Um, but, but Congress members are not eligible for this, which I kind of like. Uh, how, what has the response been to this? Um, the response has been great. Uh, we, we've had more than hundreds of pizzas going out, um, on a daily basis. And, um, you know, I, I, for us, it was, you know, Certainly, just something where we felt we could do something for for you know for our, our community and people who are living in our community. And obviously, we're in you know DC metro area, and you know I, I think obviously there's a lot of people who are impacted by this all across the country. But there's a whole lot of people in, in DC area that are affected by this, and you know including uh, neighbors, family, friends. And so we just wanted to do something and let people know that we care about them. Well, uh, my question is, though, I heard that initially, right after the government shut down, that a lot of government workers would say, oh, well, we got a couple of days off here. So they actually went to the bars at night. They went to restaurants and were actually spending money. Is that true? And then number two, how has it been in the days that followed? Yeah, no, I'll be, <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Um, you know, we did see a lot of people with more free time on their hands. Um, you know, not a good thing, but yet, you know, they did spend it, you know, not sitting at home. They did come out and, you know, and visit our restaurant and they don't do know that. And, you know, I've talked to fellow chefs and it's been the same. Um, but, you know, there, there's a lot of things that do affect, um, the shutdown. You gotta, you gotta know we're also ranges adjacent to, um, to a hotel. And there's also a lot of hotels. We, we stay in contact with hotels because it's a lot of, it's a good indicator of business for us. Mm -hmm. And we know that um, days after the shutdown, they went from 70% occupancy to 30% occupancy in the area. Wow. Meaning a lot of hotels. So, you know, when business is shut down in the government, business is shut down. And so, you know, it is greatly affecting us because it means there's a lot of transient business that's not coming through D.C. And we're not, you know, benefiting from that. So... Uh, you know, this is something that's impacting a lot of people, not just the federal government workers, but also uh, those who are, um, you know, like us, have small business. Well, uh, Brian Voltaggio is our guest. Not only are you a, a nationally known uh, chef, but you're also a business owner, as you're discussing. And we had one of your colleagues, uh, Chef Chef Tracy, who also has a restaurant uh, here in, in uh, uh, Chevy Chase. Uh, he was right. on. He was talking about some other decisions that government can make that affect you. Uh, he was chiming in on the minimum wage uh, laws here in Washington. I wonder where you stand on that. Uh, my understanding is that if D.C. increases the minimum wage to the level that they're discussing, it's really going to affect restaurants. You employ a lot of people at range. Uh, have you have you done any of the calculations on that? Yeah, no, we have. Um, you know, it, it is something that when we were opening range, we we, we were ahead of the curve. Um, you know, but it, 
wages are going to are going to go up. Um, you know, obviously we we try to do our best, and we it is always going to be the case. We try not to pass that impact along to our guests. I mean, we have to remain competitive and you know make sure our price point is manageable for our guests. Um, so yeah, it's a scary thought. I mean, I think that we're probably going to end up taking some sort of a hit, but you know, it's the it's the story of doing business in, in, in this area and, and having restaurants. I mean, restaurants are, uh, you know, contrary to what many believe, they're not the most profitable business in the world. But, um, you know, so we, we're running fine lines. We have to make sure that we maintain them, and, you know, we'll, we'll do our best. Well, I'm, but I'm, Chef Jeff said it cost him at his restaurant about a half a million dollars. It, it, yeah, it, we it, haven't. It, um, yeah, I, I can't really tell you exactly, you know, how that would impact us because we would, we would be making, you know, you know, definitely some changes. You know, the great thing is for us and what we do is, um, you know, we, we employ a lot of interns, um, mm-hmm. you know, at, at all the restaurants that stay close to and, and, you know, for people who have restaurants in the area, I'm sure they're going to be doing the same. Uh, you know, so that does help alleviate some of that and offset the cost because I stay close to the Culinary Institute of America, which is, you know, my alum mm-hmm. from, from New York. And, you know, so I, I do as I did when I was an intern in New York and, and, uh, you know, come down and obviously work at the minimum wage. And, uh, you know, so that'll help offset some of the costs. Well, I've, I've been to Range a couple of times, Brian, and I want you to know you do have the best servers in town. I mean, they're so knowledgeable and incredibly helpful. So, uh, well, you, thank you. What, however you're doing it, you're doing a great job. One last quick question. I've always wondered, you know, the holidays are coming up, and most people go back to their families, go back to mom and dad's house for Thanksgiving dinner, Christmas dinner. Uh, when you do that, when you and your brother go back to mom's house for Thanksgiving, does she make you cook? Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> she's, she's done. She's had her time. Yeah. Um, that would be great, know, a, a quick-fire challenge uh, of turkey between you and your brother uh, mom, at yeah. mom's bidding. Yeah, Michael and I, we did do, you know, we did a, 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 a small holiday segment for um, Cooking Channel last year where it was Michael and I, we weren't necessarily pitted against each other, but we, you know, we both did a turkey, we both did some side dishes, and it was fun, it was a cool little thing. Um, but, you know, we haven't, it's tough for us to actually get together on holidays sometimes. You know, Michael's busy out there, and I'm busy here. And um, but when we do, uh, we we, uh, we take on the cooking. Mom and, makes uh, you cook. Mom makes you cook. Well, that's good. I got to tell yeah, you, that's, that's... mom is a judge though too. Trust me. Uh, <laughs> no harsh I'm not one. Afraid to give her opinions. <laughs> you know. Well, that moment on Top Chef when uh, she was there for both of you. You know, it came down to Brian and his brother Michael for the for the crown and uh, yeah, the, the she look... wanted Kevin to win. By the way, <laughs> so she didn't yeah. have to worry mom about. Mom always that. liked him best. That's a, it's like the <laughs> Smothers Brothers. Yeah. Brian Voltaggio, thanks, yeah, thanks so much for being our yeah. guest today, and thanks for what you're doing for the furlough government workers. Again, that's free cheese Absolutely. pizza over there at uh, mm-hmm. at uh, Range, pizza. and it's not. Yeah, we're not for, talking uh, Domino's. Stuff here. This is good brick oven pizza. All right. Thanks yeah, a lot, Brian. Thanks for uh, yeah, helping me.